What's going on everybody? Brian Russ here. Just want to take a quick minute to talk about fungus gnats. So somebody requested me to uh, give a little rant about fungus gnats and I don't typically see fungus gnats as a real big issue but I know they can be a pest and typically what I've seen in the past is that they proliferate in abundance in soil that has a lot of decomposing organic matter that is also very saturated or very moist soil. So they really, really like those conditions. They like to have a lot of decomposing organic matter because they'll feed off of, the larva will feed off of the bacteria, the fungus gnats will feed off of the, the uh, microorganisms like their namesake, fungus gnat. So one of the things that you can do to combat the, the issue is to do a soil drench with a combination of Pyganic. I like to use the 5.0 and Pyganic is uh, pyrethrum which is made from chrysanthemum flower and it is made through critical CO2 uh, distillation similar to the way that we make uh, cannabis distillate. Um, that is an organic pesticide. It works very, very effectively and it has a half-life of about 11 and a half hours. So it works very fast and then it dissipates very quickly as well. I like to mix that with something like Metahazarium or Bruveria bassiana. And then also one of the things that is kind of necessary that you should be inoculating your soil with anyway is nematodes. And I like to use the Steiner name of Feltier nematodes. Those uh, target both um, soil pests like root aphids and fungus gnats. And so it's good as preventative maintenance and you should be using something like that um, as a preventative in your integrated pest management SOPs anyway. Um, also, making sure that when you do your uh, foiler IPMs that you also um, get the undersides of the leaf in any areas where those where those flyers could potentially be uh, hiding out. So it's really important. Then another thing you can also do is sticky traps. So I unfortunately got a little bit of leaf material on my sticky traps and sticky traps are good not only for actually catching any type of pest, but also for any type of identification. And it's really good, because if I go in here and I look, and I'm looking at my sticky cards, I can see whether or not there's an insect pressure, and then how bad that insect pressure is. So it's very important to make sure that you take all the proper procedures and you do your proper IPM protocols. And now, the last thing that I wanted to say about fungus gnats is this. It, in my experience, the use of kelp, which I also don't use because of the heavy metal content of kelp, but the, the use of kelp oftentimes makes the fungus gnats growth explosive. And I noticed this after doing applications of kelp meal, but then I started thinking on it and it brought me back to the beach. And when I see big piles of seaweed that are sitting out in the sand, they're always swarming with clouds of gnats. So I don't know if there's a connection or if there's something in the kelp itself, but I do know that kelp also will um, help with the proliferation of that insect. And we don't want those insects because fungus gnats can carry, uh, they can be vectors for disease and they can be vectors for other types of insects like hemp, uh, russet mite, and things like that. So quick rant, hope you guys enjoyed it.